Yeah. All so. right. Oh, you know what? It's 401. So I think we'll we'll get started. Uh, call the meeting to order at 401. I have already taken an attendance. Oh, wait, we got somebody that just joined. Oh, Andre. In. Oh, okay. Andre. Okay. Welcome, Andre. Hi, Andre. I don't know where my picture is. What do I do to for my Oh, picture? you go to the top and push the little icon for the video camera. There's a video. Start video down at the bottom here. Yes. There you go. go. You, you were on. There. Yeah. Okay. There we are. All right. You're kind of in shadow there. Okay. That's good. Oh, no. Oops. All okay. right. So we're all looking good now. We can get, we can get started. Um, so attendance, I've got that taken care of. Uh, citizens, petitions, comments, and concerns. Any? All right. Uh, in the packet, I sent out the minutes from the December 10th. Were there any corrections or can I get a motion and a second to approve? Uh, so moved. Okay. That would be Joan. Joan. And would, could somebody second that? Second it? Sure, Sydney. Okay. Well, Ray had his hand up first. Okay. Um, any discussion about the minutes? They were uh, wonderfully uh, uh, complete, and it, it's not, and it's good history. Oh, well, thank you. So, uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes, you could say aye, or aye. raise your finger, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> any opposed? None. Okay. All right. Uh, correspondence and communications. Anything to share? All right. Uh, reports, Avalonia. Joellen, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, there we go. I just took myself off mute. Um, well, we continue to monitor the trails. Avalonia continues to monitor the trails for what they call wind throws, and we've had quite a few because of the drought a couple of years ago and the ongoing high winds. So, but that uh, is being taken care of as it comes to our attention. Um, we had a conservation easement granted by the current owners of 100 Susan Lane, which Bruce has lots of information on. And um, it actually gives us access to our easterly property boundary line for Town's End and for an encroachment that occurred when they were clearing the property for the construction of the house that has been built at 100 Susan Lane. And the DEP actually was involved with that. Uh, we continue on with our property boundary reviews. Um, we're going to be holding an Arbor Day event on the Moore Woodlands. A few, day, a few years ago, some of our stewards put up tree identification signs on the trees. So we're working out a little program to try to get the public involved with looking for those tree ID signs around our trail on the Moor. Um, if people aren't aware of the fact, Groton is one of 18 tree cities in the state of Connecticut, and they have been for 24 years. And normally they'd be planting a tree on Arbor Day. I don't know if they're going to do that or not this Where year. Where did you mark your trees? What trail? There's only one trail on the Moor Woodlands. Oh you, oh, you have some on Towns End too. Some little. I'm talking only about the pro oh. program we're planning for the Moor Woodlands. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, offsite, we've been recently awarded some grants, and that will allow Avalonia to uh, come to closure on some of the additional properties they have in the pipeline. 
One comment I'd like to make is that I don't know if other people are experiencing this or not, but we continue to see an increased usage of our trails. However, it doesn't appear to me that the increased usage of the trails by dog owners quite understand the concept of the principles of outdoor ethics, which is leave no trace. Is that something that other organizations are experiencing? It gets a little old when you're working on a property. How about you, Joan? Noticing yeah, it? We've had a few. Um, mostly people do pick up uh, one or two. Uh, considering the, the increase in numbers of people, uh, it's not too bad. Good. We had an episode on Tritown a few weeks ago where some woman was walking two pit bulls off leash. And that's a heavily used piece of property in North Stonington for not only hikers, but dog walkers. So that caused a little bit of a problem. And um, sometimes people just don't understand that they must be on a leash for everybody's safety. That's all I have for Avalonia, unless anybody has any questions. Thank you, Joellen. I'll forward the report in writing, Mark. Oh, perfect. Okay, uh, so the next up is the COP property. I, I don't really have a lot to report there other than over the winter, the park staff went through all the trails and cut back the brush, which is something that they do on an annual basis. And we did have a volunteer on the COP family park board went out and blazed the purple trail, which is one of the newer trails. And it's kind of up in the, I guess you'd call it the the Highlands area of the of the park. So uh, he was kind enough to go out and do that, offered to do it, and we took him up on that. Uh, Crosstown Trail. Now I do have some news about the Crosstown Trail, which is pretty exciting. So a couple of years ago, I had submitted a letter to the permanent school board building uh, asking that they consider uh, including in the, uh, the building of the new uh, elementary school, uh, formerly the uh, Cutler School, uh, that they consider including the bridge, uh, the footbridge as part of the project. Well, I heard from Rick Norris, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and he asked me to send the information to him because we had all the wetland permits done, we had the engineering uh, division within public works had uh, come up with a plan and, and a cost estimate. And, and we had applied for a grant and unfortunately uh, we didn't get the grant at that time, but I sent that to Rick. Uh, he presented it to the permanent school board committee and they thought that putting a bridge in there was an excellent idea. And so they are fully supportive of putting the bridge in. And right now Rick is getting, he's, given the engineering documents to the contractor that's working on the school building and they are gonna price the project out. And Rick says, as long as the project comes, uh, you know, is within the ballpark of what the estimate from, that was generated from public works, that it looks like that project will go forward. So that's Terrific. pretty exciting news because I, I've been here Eight years now, and I think you know, getting a bridge across that has been uh, a goal since I've been here, and I think it's been a goal uh, for those that of you that have been around even longer. So I think that will. Uh, I have no sense of what the timeline will be, but uh, the fact that we've got support from the permanent school building, um, we should be able to move forward with that project. So that would mean on the Crosstown Trail that we then don't have to walk the back streets to come in at the top end, that we can go straight from the, the uh, Fishtown Road um, entrance exit from um, the Merritt Family Forest and down a couple hundred yards and hang a left into where Cutler is and then go across into uh, the Pond Park. That's that's correct. And the reason that this, the, um, the school building 
committee thought that it was a good idea is they they saw uh, it as a benefit to the neighborhood and also would allow students access uh, you know down to the river so there could be an, an educational element too so right. Uh, right. yeah so that's uh, that's big news and, and hopefully um, in the next 12 months or, or maybe even less you know we can have some kind of a ribbon cutting and uh, get that bridge open because Somebody had sent me, and I think, Tom, maybe it was you. I think you had sent some pictures of um, kind of a homemade bridge that people were using this winter. And you could see uh, all of the, the tracks in the snow. So it, it is something that uh, you know the neighborhood is using on a regular basis. So now to have a permanent structure there that uh, we know isn't going to wash away with the next big rainstorm, I think, is, is, a, big, is a big plus. So. Anyway, that's uh, some great news about the Crosstown Trail. Yes. Great. Could I could could I add to Crosstown Trail? Absolutely. Uh, what I just sent to Jerry um, is that we found that most of our trails are presently quite busy since COVID uh, event, and we feel it would be best not to enroll in the Connecticut Forest and Park Trails Day weekend to invite the rest of Connecticut to join us. In addition, because of COVID distancing, there are a number of our volunteers not available for joining a group activity. But we wanted to thank Parks and Rec for all the many years of partnership that right from the beginning have allowed it to happen. So. Uh, for, for 2021, GOSA will not be in the book advertising to the rest of the state that we're having a lot of trails going, activity going on here. Okay. May I add something to that? Sure. Um, I think one approach would be that instead of putting out the information as a group hike, that perhaps somebody could talk about the acquisition of the trail, the property with the trail on it, give people a map and send them off on their own and perhaps provide a little libation at the end with cookies and milk. That but I think Ellen usually is there with that cookies and juice. Well, this, this year they're saying no handouts at all. They're doing all the paperwork ahead of time, all the waivers. So you're not supposed to hand out cookies or food or Thank pamphlets you. or anything. Thank you for that information. Yeah. But that still does not preclude us showing off all the work that people do to acquire and maintain trails for this increased public use. And in my experience at Tritown and some other properties, I don't think that a lot of the public currently using some of our properties are even aware of who owns them and the work effort that goes into them to support these trails for the public use. Well, you can participate. Um, it's more complicated. They have you have a dashboard, and there's a lot of RSVPs, and they don't give the exact location until you get back to someone who's registered. Uh, and the registrations limited to 15 people per leader, and if you have more than that, you can start in separate groups and keep going. It, there's just a lot of um, a lot more. Uh, detail uh, so to make it safe. But you also have the option of providing a video of your property. You have the option of providing maps and a just, um, just description to provide to the um, Connecticut Forest and Park if you want to do that. If you want the word about your properties to get out, you can provide all that. I hope we're not shortchanging ourselves by not participating in some of these opportunities like Earth Day and Arbor Day and Trails Day and Well, <laughs> I mean, Avalonia can choose to do something. Um, you know, uh, you know, you've got a beautiful, you've got beautiful properties. Um, you could do a little loop 
um, of Townsend and more woodland and. I'm sure we'll figure it out, Joan. We'll figure it okay. out somehow so that we don't conflict with all these COVID regulations. Yeah, yeah you just have to do your homework and see, see how they're setting it up this year. All right, uh, Groton Open Space. Okay, uh, we've been busy at GOSA. Um, we're close to closing on the Sheep Farm South. Uh, we have two more signatures to go, the deputy, uh, the commissioner, the DEP, and the attorney general. And then the money is supposed to be available a couple of weeks after that, but we don't have control over their schedules. So we hope um, within a couple months at any rate that we'll have acquired the property. And uh, Dan O'Connell, goes to stewardship chair, has approach the town and they have forwarded to the uh, state DOT a request for a blinking light, a pedestrian you know, button that you could push to cross from the Merritt property to the Sheep Farm South at, at the intersection of Flanders Road. And also for a light um, at the intersection of uh, Brook Street and Route 215, right where the trail comes from Haley Farm into the Mortimer right. So both of those requests have been forwarded to the DEP. Uh, we hope uh, we'll get something, uh, especially on the Route 1 crossing. It's a very dangerous area. And a lot of people are using that trail and that crossing already, even though we don't own the property yet. Technically, we're not supposed to have people going on the Sheep Farm South yet. Um, and once we get it, we'll be busy. Um, we have to take the time to develop a good system of trails. Uh, we've got some invasives. So I think we'll try to get a contract with um, the Department of Agriculture for an equip grant. And, uh, and we have to do all of our other due diligence, the uh, boundary walks, mark the boundaries and stuff. So we'll be busy with that. Uh, so, um, the rest of our trails are pretty good. Uh, Mark, I took the liberty of putting up some of the blue flags. I walked the Mort right a little bit and I did a little bit um, where that homemade bridge is going from Fishtown over towards the bridge at Judson. I put a couple of blue blazes up consistent oh, okay. for, for the crosstown. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. And uh, I think that's it for, for trails. Um, you know, we've, we've been, uh, most of our properties, we've been over them many, many times and they're they're in good condition. I mean, they're always changing, but they're good. Okay, great, thank you. Could I just uh, add that we uh, have been working with the last Green Valley on cleanup um, in, in past years, we've worked at Haley Farm and other places in June. Joan has set up um, April 10, the Merritt Family Forest Route 1 cleanup, April 12, uh, uh, Senior Center hike on the 17th, Route 184 cleanup, and uh, Candlewood Ridge, and April 24, a uh, Haley Farm clean up and dealing with invasives. Uh, we've been working with um, Henry Alves, who's the head of uh, the state, the state uh, DEP area in here, and um, Eric uh, Hansen, one of the guys who runs the machines. And he's now in the process of, of uh, doing the cutting at uh, Bluff Point and, and at Haley Farm. And um, I then had an invitation from Henry to his, uh, his retirement party on the 31st of this month um, at Fort Trumbull. And I don't know who is replacing Henry Alves, but he has been a very fine, um, enthusiastic supporter of all of our parks over here. And uh, so we'll have to break in a new guy. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, town trails. So over the last couple of months, the park staff has been working with a small group 
uh, out at the King Kolnaski property, right. which is uh, by the Kolnaski school. And there is now a loop that goes from the parking lot, uh, which is just past the driveway up to the uh, Kolnaski school. There's a parking lot there that uh, EB has uh, provided access to the town so that people can park there. And there is now a trail that if you go from the parking lot up into the woods, there's now a trail that goes all the way around behind the back of the Kanaski School and actually connects up to a trail that um, Mr. Moon, who's a teacher, I think at yep. that school had built. Yep. Uh, and so that has been cleared and it has been blazed and it has some really unique features. There's some really large boulders, you know, like VW size, and it runs along a, uh, what I believe used to be a reservoir. I think the dam uh, either broke or, or was broken and the water's released, but there still is water coming down. There's a couple of small waterfalls. So we're gonna add that to the list of trails available in Groton for people to, um, to hike in. So, hey. Uh, yeah, and then on top of that, I had I was uh, in a meeting yesterday with um, some teachers at the um, what is the uh, Thames River Magnet School, which is formerly Westside School, and they you know their theme is um, well I forget what the focus of the school is, but what they're proposing to do is tie in from the school out to Birch Plain Creek. Uh, and they're going to get students to do uh, all of the work. Uh, we talked about the permitting that was going to be required, uh, identification of wetlands. And uh, so that's a project that will probably will go through the permitting stages this, uh, this summer. And the hope is that by fall, the students will be able to, uh, will have a plan and the students will be able to start uh, creating a path that goes from the back of the school out to the creek. Uh, the the long-term plan is to develop a trail that's going to go from uh, the Birch Plain Creek Park, which is just, uh, which is within the city and run a trail along there, connect to this spur that the, the students are gonna be building and eventually get all the way up to uh, all the way up to Washington Park. So that's uh, that's kind of a big project. Jill Rust from the city uh, has been coordinating all of these different people, and, and she was involved uh, with the with the project at the uh, Konaski property. So uh, we're trying to build a connection from. Uh, that goes from the town to the city. So it would be kind of a nice, a nice long hike for everybody. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So I'll, when's our next meeting? Well, this, uh, I guess at the next meeting, uh, hopefully I'll have a, an update for everybody. Good. Uh, and I also <laughs> wanted to let folks know that um, we are, the town is looking at, um, updating its bike and pedestrian master plan. The last time it was done was 2000, uh, 2004. <laughs> and so I, I've reached out, oh, uh, I see Bruce's hand go up. Uh, um, I reached out to uh, the card to see if there was funding available and there is a, uh, a grant out there that I think we're going to be applying for. I, I haven't even, talk to the town manager, this all happened a few hours ago, um, that they would pay for 80 to 90% uh, of, the, of the cost. I have no idea what uh, uh, creating that kind of a plan. That's one of the things that I'm trying to uh, track down, but uh, we will be hopefully uh, updating the uh, bike and pedestrian master plan. Perfect. Uh, yes. Great. Um, oh, yeah. Can I ask um, a question? Uh, well, uh, Joel and Tom had his when hand you get up to... first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the update on on the, from the uh, things school. Uh, one of the things is is as they're building that, would there be a con potential connection if they're going 
down to Birch Plain Creek Park. Uh, I noticed in the reviewing the town budget the, the last couple of days here that there's a, a proposal in the CIPs for redoing the bridge there on, on Thomas Road. Would, is, how would you in, in influence that bridge construction to include a pedestrian pathway to link the uh, Birch Plain Park with Sparkle Lake as part of that bridge complex? I don't know yeah, how I, that process works and what should our input from this task force be into that planning process because I didn't see it in the uh, CIPs. Yeah, Tom, I, you know, I, that's a public works project and I, and I don't have enough knowledge about that to, um, but I would suggest that you, you reach out to Greg Hanover, the director of public works and, you know, share your suggestions with him. I certainly think that's a great idea. I mean, there is a, a, a narrow on-road bike path, but you know, widening that bridge would certainly make it uh, much more pedestrian and, and biker friendly because it does get rather restricted in that in that area. The sustainability, uh, so the sustainability group, I think, is working on that bridge uh, as well, mainly because they just like uh, for the Groton Long Point Bridge, they have to deal with rising the rising uh, water world as yeah. to how much they raise them up. So the sus sustainability, Zell Stever is uh, one of the heads of that if you want to contact him. Okay, Joellen. I, I had a question. It might not be true any longer, but at one time when I was looking at the Groton GIS, there was a piece of property that was owned by some group out of state that goes between the redo of the West Side School and it's a narrow strip that comes, let's see, towards myself, towards the golf course and the senior housing or whatever that is. Is that going to be a stumbling block or does the town now own that or has there been an outreach to the group that owns it or? Has that ownership changed? I haven't looked at it recently. Yeah, but you know, Joan, I'm not able to answer any of those questions. I, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll, it, I'll take a look. But at one time okay. there was a narrow strip that would sort of preclude a path because it was owned by some group out of state. Oh, okay. All right. I'll uh, take a look. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Let's see. So uh, moving on to Tritown Trails, uh, B said she couldn't make it today. Uh, she was going to send me a written report, but I didn't receive that. But I have talked to B Reynolds a, a couple of times uh, this past Monday. I know there was a, a reporter from the day that met B up in Preston uh, and was going to interview her and talk about the Tritown Trail. And I also know that B has um, reached out to Groton Utilities to a couple of their board members, and they are intending to invite representatives from the Tritown Trail to one of their board meetings to discuss, um, you know, what the Tritown Trail group has proposed in the in the past and, and it, I don't want to make assumptions but uh, B felt like uh, you know the door the window of opportunity to uh, have a trail that connects from uh, Groton from Bluff Point up to Preston including uh, land managed by Groton Utilities the possibility might be growing for that uh, so, you know, that would be a wonderful, um, that would be really great to have a, a, a trail that connects to three different communities. And, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I was hoping that she would submit a written report. She said she would, but um, said she was gonna be out of town. So uh, hopefully we'll have more to report. Um, maybe there'll even be something in the paper about it. Uh, Tom. Yeah, I can give you a little bit. As I'm just for full disclosure, I'm a Tritown Trail board member. 
Um, oh, it's perfect. Good. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of fill in for B. I'm not the regular. B is your t is your is your representative. Uh, but I get the uh, Tritown Tell did meet with the uh, on the 17th of February uh, with the uh, ground utilities, uh, and then it then there was a a, a, a groundswell of of support. Uh, that they were asked, and it was, it was reported in the newspaper, and, and you could uh, send in comments uh, into the utilities. And they received about 40 emails uh, that was reported yesterday at uh, at their at their last this past week at the at this at this month's meeting uh, of the of the of the uh, ground utilities board. So they they and they have they're kind of overwhelmed at what to do with this whole thing. Uh, but they are still working uh, with the representatives. We we have some designated people, uh, including B and Chad uh, Frost and and David Holdridge from the uh, from the uh, board uh, that will be meeting and working with representatives from the ground utilities uh, as far as try to come up with what uh, in, in the updates that we're doing from the uh, math the original master plan that was provided uh, back in 2008 and how we're trying to. Uh, take a smaller bite per se, because the master plan had a 12 foot wide path all the way from the end of Bluff Point to Preston uh, Park. And we're, we have, as a board, we've significantly downsized that. So we're now dealing with a two foot wide path going through a two foot or four foot wide in various areas uh, and mostly focused up to uh, in, in Preston. Uh, we're working with the uh, Inland Wetlands Commission from Ledger. Uh, now to uh, we've got the first mile and uh, 1.3 miles completed. We've got permissions for everything that's in place and, and some improvements. Uh, we're working uh, to expand that down to essentially to the Grot Utilities uh, on the south side of the Joe Clark Farm in Ledger uh, to kind of get towards 214 is our next goal. But we need to get crossing uh, one easement, one private easement, and one easement with Grot Utilities uh, starting from the north. And then in parallel, we've uh, been working, uh, we've had some initial contacts uh, with the folks from the state of Connecticut, as uh, Cindy mentioned before, uh, in regard to uh, at least identifying the, tra the current trails as part of the Tritown Trail uh, that's in, at Bluff Point and, and potentially uh, getting out of on the depot road there. And then we'll work with um, Mark here uh, in regard to which way we should be going uh, pending uh, our, our, our luck with Grant Utilities, should we be going down uh, Depot Road and around Grant Utilities uh, up uh, on look towards one seven, Route 117 or going towards the front door of Grant Utilities along the Pequannock uh, uh, River there uh, on the boardwalk utilization of that. So we're kind of a little bit uh, premature right now. We've been working on getting some uh, marking and logoing uh, uh, established for the trail and uh, getting that stuff. We have the funding in place for all that. Uh, and then we'll be ho hopefully starting to mark the trail from the Groton side north as we can, as we've now uh, got the first mile done up in, in Ledger um, in Preston. So uh, good success. And the article that you talked about is Steve Fagan and it'll be out uh, not tomorrow, but next Friday uh, in the new one in the, in the, in the day. Great. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Tom, for that update. I, I apologize. I forgot you were on, on the board. So you did a great job of filling in for B. Uh, let's see. I don't have any other uh, information to share. I think we actually uh, shared quite a bit today, and there seems to be a lot of positive things happening uh, with trails and in Groton. So I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, did anybody else have anything they wanted to share? Yeah, uh, I forgot to add, um, we've started the permitting process for a bridge across Fort Hill Brook um, on the sheep farm. So it'll make connection to sheep farm south from the rest of the property go more easily. And right now I have to get a certificate of rise from our engineer and a, um, a statement from the state that it's okay to put the bridge in uh, consistent with their conservation easement. Uh, so just a little paperwork and I think then hopefully we'll, we'll get a permit for the bridge and we can put it up. Okay. Sounds good. I have one more thing that I actually forgot. <laughs> All right. The um, emphasis that Avalonia has going for the Hoffman Preserve 
they have actually set up a webinar along with the CLEAR group. It's, uh, we had 179 people on board for the first lecture and there are three more lectures coming. The title of these webinars are The Right Tree for the Right Place or something like that. I forgot exactly what the name of it is, but there'll be three more lectures about the, the climate change and the emphasis for the trees that perhaps would be better, better fit in the years to come for this area. So Juliana Barrett will be speaking at the last webinar because she was an impetus for getting the grant for the Hoffman Preserve tree business. Thank you. Thanks, Joellen. All right, anybody else? Okay, uh, it's 4.36. Uh, could I get a motion to uh, close the meeting? So moved. All right. And John Smith, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, great. If we, if we don't you. approve, we can't leave. That, exactly, right. <laughs> I, I won't end the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so our next meeting is, let me see, I just pulled it up. It is June 17th at four o'clock. Okay. So thank you all. And okay. uh, be safe. And congratulations okay. to Andre on uh, your new position. I, uh, yeah. I just, What's I, your timeline, Andre? Yeah. So um, May is the swearing in date. Um, technically, on paper, don't have an opponent. Um, but uh, still, obviously, there there's an, a, May, a May election to get through. But in the case that um, we are successful in May, I just want to say it's been a privilege working with you. Um, I understand that GU has not fully participated in these meetings in the past. And I think just given the dialogue, it's super critical that there is some sort of city representation um, within these, at these meetings in the future. So uh, if anything, you know, would like to see some folks at, at GU or at least uh, one representative from GU, a part of these, um, uh, Four, four times a, a year meetings um, because, uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Groton Utilities controls about 20% of the uh, the town open space, and that's that's very significant. And obviously, you know, with what Tom talked about with the Tri Town Trail, um, there's just a lot of decisions that you know will have a stake in, and and um, you know, again, very much look forward to you know continuing the successes we've had um, with respect to preserving open space and opening up trails to um, to our residents. So, you know, thank you for your work and look forward to partnering with you in new ways. Thank you. We, yeah, that we, would be wonderful to have a representative from Groton Utilities back on this on this group, especially now that we seem to be moving, uh, perhaps both organizations are moving or multiple organizations are moving uh, what looks like in the same direction. So Absolutely. That would be great. And I think we'll have a closer connection with the city, the town and the city now having Andre there. That's, that is true. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations, Andre. Thank you, Sydney. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap this up then. Thank you all and have a good evening. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark. Good, Mark. Bye.